In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, praise be to Allah, God Almighty, the Lord and Cherisher of the world. And may God send His peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and those who rightly follow him, until the Day of Judgment, Amen. I just left the Islamic Mosque. And um, again, he's not the first uh, Muslim speaker to say this. Most, uh, most of the Muslims in the world are preaching this and they're not aware that the thing they're doing is a grave sin. When you say, work with the Jews, work with the Christians, work with the government, work with them, this is a major, major sin in Islam. This is a major sin in Islam. To bond and unite with them and work with them and we have to work together even though they're not Muslims let's still work with them work for them it's a different story working for them as in you have a job working for one of them that's allowed working for them your your boss is Jewish you work in a store that's allowed but the type of working with them that's not allowed is and I'll give you an example a whole bunch of Jews and a whole bunch of Christians, they want to come together with Muslims on a platform, not to debate and to have a discussion about God and Islam and Christianity and Judaism, which one is the right religion. That would be called dialogue, debate. That's called propagating Islam. Come together with them to discuss which is the religion of God, or which one is the right religion, that's allowed. But coming together with them at a city hall to work out the world's problems together, side by side with them, coming, uniting with them, working side by side with them to work out the world's problems, to work out the problem of slavery, of racism, of injustice, of inequality and poverty, to work with them, to solve the world's problems with them. Show me one history. Show me one event in the history of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where Prophet Muhammad say, I want all these Jews and I want all these Christians to come with us Muslims and let's work together to decide how we're going to solve racism, how are we going to solve poverty, how are we going to solve injustice. Show me one incident. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Peace be upon him, never did such a thing. Even in the most critical time of Prophet Muhammad's life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even in the most critical time of Prophet Muhammad's life, when he was beaten, when he was beaten in the city of Ta'if, he was beaten in the city of Ta'if, he lost Abu Talib, his uh, uncle, who was killed. So he had no one to protect him at that particular moment. At that particular moment, Muhammad had no one to protect him. Abu Talib, was uh, died and Khadija died. Khadija was his first wife, and so he goes to Taif by himself with one of his uh, uh, friends, and he was nearly beaten to death for peacefully propagating Islam. Weak, alone, by himself, despite being in that position. When he went back to Mecca, when he went back to Mecca. Did he say, you know what, I'm weak, I'm vulnerable, I'm by myself. My, the one who used to protect me in Mecca, Abu Talib, my uncle, he died. Um, let me uh, unite with the Jews and the Christians. Let me work with the Jews and the Christians and the pagans. Let me work with the pagans. Let me pretend to be their friends. Let me unite with them, work with them, so side by side, interfaith. Did he do that? And that was in the most critical junction in his life, the most, at the that was the most time he was in need, yet he did not go to them, work with them, side by side, in any way, shape, or form. What did he do? He patiently waited till God gave him victory, till God gave him uh, relief, till God gave him success. So Muhammad never worked with the Jews and the pagans and the Christians together to work out the world's problems. He called them to Islam, and if they refused, he told them, Lakum dinukum waliyadeen. Lakum dinukum waliyadeen. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. He did not work with them, but he called them to Islam. If they rejected, he told them, to you be your way and to me my way. That's what Prophet Muhammad told them, peace be upon him. You see, the pagans, they came up to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. 
Abu Abu Lahab, his uncle, he came up to Prophet Muhammad and he told him, Where, where's my ancestors? You know, my family, the one who died, where are they? Muhammad, and when did he ask this to Muhammad? He told Muhammad this, he's asking Muhammad this peace be upon him, when Muhammad was most in need, when Muhammad was vulnerable, when Muhammad was vulnerable, what did Muhammad say, peace be upon him? He said, your family, they're with your ancestors. He didn't know what he meant. Abu Lahab went to his people. He said, he said, our family, the ones who are dead, they're with our ancestors. This Abu Lahab's family told him, he means that they're in the hellfire. Abu Lahab went to go confirm. He said, when you said my family's with my ancestors, did you say that they're in the hellfire? Is that what you meant? He said, Naam, wa man ba'ata ala ma mata alay. He said, yes, and whoever died the way they died, they're also in the hellfire. That was the perfect time for interfaith. That was the perfect time to cope with them. He was vulnerable, he was weak, he needed protection, he needed help, he needed a, 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 an ummah. He could have coped with them, worked with them, side by side, interfaith. I'll scratch my back, you scratch yours. At the moment, let me say, oh, they're with God. Let me say, you know what? Uh, there's a chance they might go to heaven. You know what? Let me work with them. He didn't. He said, they're in hellfire, and whoever dies the way they did, they will be in hellfire too. He said, we're going to, and they caused them, uh, they caused them massive torment after that. They caused them suffering after that. They didn't even know by speaking like that, he's going to encounter suffering. He knew that. So then why did he say that? Because we do not, we do not compromise Islamic words. We do not compromise Islamic teachings. We do not compromise Islamic teachings because we might lose something in the process. Even if we lose our money, our car, our wealth, our houses, our loved ones, we do not compromise Islam to lose just because we don't want to lose anything. If it means losing everything, then so be it. We lose everything. So no interfaith. Call them to Islam peacefully. If they reject, tell them to you be your way and to me to me my way. In the Medina, Muhammad established an Islamic caliphate in Medina. In Medina, Muhammad united the Muslims together. He did not unite the Muslims. And then he didn't say, you know what? Let's work with the Jews and the Christians and the pagans. He did not do that. Muhammad did not do that. Allahumma salli sallam barakah ala Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم